Welcome everybody to this uh, final presentation about MATLAB and ROS. Today we will see how to introduce a global planner in our robot. We have seen uh, in, through this week uh, different uh, steps in order to configure our robot to be completely autonomous. So we started uh, from the hardware setup and the connection, the study of the kinematics and the odometry of the robot, the local planner and the mapping that we have seen in the last video with Alberto, and now we'll see how to uh, plan our path in order to be followed. So the global planner. Let's see uh, today's agenda. We will start by a short introduction on how uh, we can manage the global planning problem. Uh, we will see a specific uh, planning algorithm, the PRM, the probabilistic roadmaps. We will see a demo and finally the conclusions of all of this work. Let's start by the introduction. We have seen uh, last uh, times that uh, this is uh, our main schema. We have our robot that have uh, as, uh, some inputs, so the command bell of the two wheels, but uh, we have also the sensors, so the LiDAR and the wheel speed. We can uh, close uh, the uh, loop uh, measuring the wheel speed and uh, inputting uh, into the, our uh, robot uh, the uh, desired speed. Of course, uh, this uh, is uh, uh, created, this uh, speed requirement is created by the path following uh, uh, block. Now, the path that uh, we until now provide uh, as done, so we give uh, a complete path and our robot uh, follow the path. Now we want to substitute this module with a global planner, so we don't want anymore to uh, state a path already defined, but at a starting point, an endpoint on a map, and uh, we want to auto-generate a, a possible path and uh, the robot uh, should uh, go through this uh, generated path. So let's uh, see uh, more schematically what I mean. So this uh, was the, uh, the starting point, so we have uh, the starting point and the goal and we simply linked uh, the two points. Now the complex uh, go further away. So we have uh, a map, in this case we have, uh, uh, as uh, you can see, the black points are the occupancy, so the obstacles, the white points uh, are instead uh, the free spaces. So we define a starting point, for example, in this uh, corner, and we define a goal, for example, in this other corner. We want to auto-generate a path that uh, keep into account uh, the obstacle on the, on the map, and in particular, find a possible path, a possible sequence of points that uh, go from the starting point to the end point. So, uh, of course, this uh, could, must also take into account the obstacle, the possible obstacle on our path our final result would be something like this. So what is our global planner, uh, more specifically? We want uh, to have uh, a block, a system that is starting from free information, so the start location uh, of the robot, the end desired location uh, that we want uh, the robot to achieve, and the map uh, in which the robot is going through, and add, uh, in addition to this, the robot dimension, because we need to take into account the occupancy of the, of the robot, we have uh, as uh, output the waypoints that compose our path. So let's go more in detail with the description of a specific uh, global planner algorithm, the PRM. PRM, that is uh, the probabilistic roadmaps, is co mainly constituted by two phases. So uh, the first one will be a construction phase, where, uh, as you can see uh, in the uh, image, uh, on the right side, uh, we build up a graph that uh, link a different position, a different free position inside the map. Second, the query, where we will search of a specific path that linked one point with another one. So, more specifically, the construction phase uh, is composed by three steps. We start from the map, of course, we check some random points, of course, the uh, cardinality of these uh, uh, random points depends on how we define the problem. In fact, you can see, for example, a low density problem or high density problem. And uh, each time we select a point that is free in the map, uh, we connect uh, this point to the key nearest point. So the key uh, points that are nearest to these new points are linked in a graph to this point. We repeat this operation until the map is dense enough for our purpose. The second step is the query phase. So now we have a graph, more dense or low dense, it depends from the case. We define the start position and the end position, for example, here and here. And we select the graph point that are nearer to this position because it's not uh, sure that we have selected some points that are already part of the graph. So we are actually finding uh, in the graph the points that are uh, 
a process to the starting and the end point, final step, we have uh, two points that are part of the graph. We uh, need to search for the minimum, uh, the shortest path between two points. And we can use, for example, the distra shortest path algorithm. So once we have found the shortest path, this constitutes the path that we need to follow in order to achieve our goal. Let's now go to the demo. But before, I want to show you another uh, important point. In fact, uh, normally, uh, the global planning algorithm focus uh, on the robot as uh, it uh, would be a point-like uh, um, point -like structure. So the robot is not an occupancy, but only a position, a pose inside the map. This uh, makes it uh, impossible to understand if uh, its occupancy actually uh, will hurt an obstacle or not. In fact, in this case, you can see that the path uh, is not on the obstacle, so it could be correct. But if we uh, see also the occupancy of our robot, we can easily see that uh, if its center is on this path, we can see that uh, we will hurt the obstacle on our path. So the solution to this problem is uh, called inflation. Inflation is uh, a procedure where we take our robot, we define the uh, minimum radius uh, that uh, of the circle that uh, circumscribe our robot, this is the maximum occupancy. And uh, with uh, this radius, uh, we go to enlarge the obstacle with this radius in such a way that the now the new uh, occupancy map called inflated uh, now have some virtual obstacle where uh, the position of the robot could not be present because otherwise uh, the robot could uh, collide with. Uh, the obstacle. So as you can see from the starting occupancy map, we go through the inflated one, where the radius is defined by the radius of our robot. In, in such a way, our search for the global path would be completely uh, good because if even if we go very near to the uh, inflated map, here is a safe zone where our robot in neither case could collide with the obstacles. But now let's see the actual demo. So here I have a script that goes through all the steps uh, to perform a global planning. So it is an operation that in this case is performed offline because uh, actually the robot in this uh, operation is uh, still normally. Uh, so we start uh, uh, clearing all of the variable and loading the stanzone map dot map that is uh, uh, the occupancy map of our um, of our area of our map. So let's see together all of these steps. This is a occupancy map defined uh, in a double form. So for each uh, point of the map, we have a double uh, value that define the possibility of having an obstacle. Actually, uh, in order to perform a fast and reliable uh, obstacle avoidance, we should go to a binary occupancy map. So a uh, occupancy map that have some zones that are considered uh, free, some zones that are considered occupied. So we define uh, this uh, map double, so as I said, the double map, and uh, we convert it uh, to uh, the logic version through a simply comparison to a threshold. So each point that have a value above 0 0.4 will be 1, otherwise 0. This uh, next uh, will be converted to a binary occupancy map. Okay. So now we define the robot radius, as I said before, for the inflation process, and uh, we uh, copy the map, uh, the starting map, into a new map inflated object. And through this command, inflate of map inflated and robot radius, we perform the inflation of the map in order to achieve uh, the uh, correct response. These are uh, only uh, in order to uh, merge the two information and plot uh, the two maps, one above the other. So we can see that running the section. Okay, we have uh, two different figures. As I said, two different figures. This is the starting binary occupancy map. This is the second that is inflated. In fact, is, if you can see, the gray zone is the inflation one, the difference uh, between the two. So now we have the inflation, and we can go through the next step. The first one is to define the starting location of our robot and the goal location. In this case, 8 meters, 9.5, 18, 9. If we run this code, we can see that opening the figure, we have a 3D representation of the occupancy map. 
ok the occupancy map with the starting point and the end point starting and the end so now we have checked that uh, actual uh, starting and end point are correct we want we would like to um, create our path how to generate this path it is uh, actually very simple we simply create a mobile robot prm object that we work on the map inflated with uh, uh, the density of 250 and after that this uh, created the graph so this is the starting point as i said of the so-called uh, generation um, of the graph uh, in the second phase as i said this is the query we find the path of this uh, object prm complex uh, between a starting location and goal location finally i simply change the name of the variable from path to waypoints and the plot the waypoints into on the map so we can simply run this action and uh, if i show you the previous map you can see that we have now uh, the starting location, the ending location, as I before, but we have also other uh, poles that define the path. So the series of this uh, position that we can see also in the uh, waypoints variable. The waypoints variable are a series of waypoints that uh, we can feed to our uh, path planning, uh, path following algorithm, as Alberto showed you last time, and uh, our robot will perform all of the steps. Let's uh, only see uh, only a little recap on our simulink. Uh, here you can see the simulink of our robot. Uh, I, can re uh, I can remember you, I can recall you that uh, we have these inputs. Last time the path was defined uh, arbitrarily. Now the path is simply taking the variable that we defined uh, on our workspace, so a series of waypoints that will go through the poor pursuit uh, unit that will uh, perform the step-by-step uh, -step following of the path. The result is uh, this one. I can show you a little demo. Here you can see our robot that uh, is uh, starting, is uh, going through all of the, the key points. As you can see here, uh, you can see that uh, this uh, orange is the obstacle that you could see on the map. This uh, with uh, the other desk. And finally, when it reaches uh, the final position, it's up. I'm uh, concluding. This is the last of our series of four videos about uh, uh, programming of a ROS robot with uh, MATLAB and Simulink. Uh, I would like uh, to suggest you uh, all of the materials uh, and the documents on uh, MATLAB website. And uh, if you have uh, any question about uh, what we have done of, or something else that uh, we, you would like to see, let, uh, let us know through our mail or with our social page. Thank you. Have a great day.